Taking your shots and pitches in a 3D workspace and working with camera, lighting and node seems pretty tricky. But in this video, I'm going to make it super easy and super simple for you. This video is for you if you're new to Fusion or if you're coming from After Effects and already have been doing animation in there and Fusion seems a bit tricky to you uh, while working in 3D workspace. So I'm gonna break this down in simple steps for you to follow. In this video, we're going to use this picture of a sky and we're going to use these PNG clouds and we're going to add 3D text in the 3D workspace and we're going to move the camera. This example is gonna enable you to, you know, create any scene from scratch in the 3D environment. So watch the full video so that you don't miss out the important details. The pictures and the PNG files that we're going to use in this example, I'm going to link them in the description so that you can download and you can also work along. So in the edit page, I'm first of all going to create the fusion composition. For that, I'll go to effects. And in the effects, I'll go to effects again and drop in the fusion composition. Now, the default length of this fusion composition is five seconds, but you can also alter the length by dragging it over. And this is how you change the duration of your fusion composition. Now that we have our fusion composition, let's go to fusion. I'm roughly going to show you the fusion interface. If you already know it, you can skip this chapter and move on. So this is where your nodes are sitting and this is the media out node. And if we go to the media pool and drag and drop in this image of the sky that we have and we can connect it to the media out. And now we can see that I have two viewers in here. Uh, this is the right side viewer and this is the left side viewer. Both the viewers can be used to view any nodes that you have in here in your node tree. Now, this is the place where you're going to find the commonly used nodes. And if you want to add a node in between two nodes, you can select the node before and you can press shift plus spacebar and it's going to open up this node search tool. So let's add in text. It has already added a merge node to merge that text over this image. So if I select this, I can see that the node that is selected, I'm able to see the settings of that node in here, in the inspector. So you can turn this inspector on and off like this. Let's type in text. Now, if I want to preview this node in the left side viewer, I can come here and you can see two dots over here. If I select the left side dot, it's gonna show me the text node in the left side viewer. And right now in the right side viewer, I have selected media out. So you can also press one to show it in the left side and two to show it in the right side viewer. Nodes are like effects. You can think of them as layers in After Effects. So if I come here to the node graph and if I wanna zoom in, I can simply press plus and it's gonna zoom in. I can press minus and it's gonna zoom out. So this is roughly the interface of Fusion and now let's create our 3D scene. I'm just gonna delete this text and merge node. And now we have this media in, which we are gonna rename as sky. And to convert this 2D image into a 3D image, we need to add in image plane 3D. So you have all the commonly used 3D nodes in this section. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this image plane 3D. And I'm gonna delete this link by coming here at the end. And I'll connect this sky to the image plane 3D. And now we need a merge node so that we are able to add in more image planes. So I'll come here and add in a merge 3D, connect this image plane to the merge 3D. And now we need a 3D renderer to render this out to the timeline. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this render 3D node, connect it, connect it to the output. And now you can see the image. Now, if you wanna see the image in the 3D plane, you can select your merge node, hit one on the keyboard, and now you can see this in the 3D space. Navigating in 3D space is simple. You can use your scroll wheel and by moving forward and backward, you can move it up and down. And I'm using a multi-directional scroll wheel. So if I move right and left, it's gonna move right and left. And if I press shift and move right and left, it's gonna rotate right and left. And if I press shift, move it up and down, it's gonna rotate up and down. And simply I can click on my scroll wheel and I can drag around. So this is roughly the navigation of a 3D plane. So let's add in a camera node. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this camera 3D in here and connect it to the Merge 3D. And now we have the camera, but we're not able to see anything in the output. That's because the camera and the image plane 3D are at the same plane. So come here and drag this Z axis 
and it's gonna show me the image now if i click on the camera node you can see that the default focal length of the camera is 35 mm we can do a detailed video on just the camera node in a later video but right now i'm gonna leave it as it is now let's go to transform and move the camera a little backwards so let's bring it back to 3.0 and now let's add in our text node and I'm going to drag in text 3D in here and I'm just going to connect this to the merge node and now we have the text let's type in something like clouds and now you're able to see this glitchy screen that's because they're on the same plane so let's move it back by going into the transform and bring it closer to the camera let's resize it and make it smaller now let's zoom in and make it look more like 3D. I'm going to click here, press plus, and I'm going to extrude it now to give it more depth. Let's bring up the extrusion depth to somewhere here. Let's bring up the bevel depth. And to make it look more like 3D, I'm going to go to transform and rotate it around the Y axis somewhere here. So it's good for now, but at the end, we're going to make it look more like 3D by adding the lighting effects at the end of this video. So let's bring back the view to fit to the screen. And now let's adjust our image plane. So I'm going to go to the image plane of the sky. I'm going to select it and I'll go to the transform and let's bring it back a little bit like this. And let's adjust the size of it so that it's filling the whole of the screen. So uh, because this image is not a proper 1920 1080 image, we'll uncheck this lock XY option and we're just going to fit it to the screen. You can always have a correct aspect ratio image, but for this example, we're going to use this one. Let's move it down around the Y axis a little bit so that it's filling the screen. So now let's add in another text. I'm just going to move it away and I'm going to copy this text, Command C, select in the node tree, Command V, and I'm just going to connect this text again to the Merge 3D. Now this time, let's call it 3d increase the size a little bit somewhere like this just go to the transform option move it up in the y-axis and let's move the other text down a little bit perhaps let's bring it in the center somewhere here now let's change the color of it go to text and let's make it a little gray perhaps let's make the other text blue like this somewhere here perhaps and now let's add the clouds so i'm just going to make some space in here just going to move this these text nodes to this side and now let's add in the cloud so let's go to the media pool i have this png image let's drag and drop this in now let's add in an image plane 3d let's connect this and connect this to the merge 3d and we have our cloud so let's move this cloud closer to the camera like this and let's make a copy of the same cloud command c command v and we have another copy let's connect this to the merge as well and let's select this and we're going to move this cloud a little backwards so that it's not on the same plane let's move it a little upwards perhaps like this and the other one a little downwards Let's come to the first frame, go select this image plane, go to the transform, put in a keyframe at X position and go to the image, the second image plane and go to transform and add a keyframe at the X position. Now let's move to the last frame, move this cloud out of the way towards the left side. Right here, I suppose, and the other cloud, select that, move it towards the right side. Now, if we play it back, we can see that the clouds are moving over time. Now let's give a movement to the camera as well. So I'm just going to go to the camera, select it, go to the transform and put in keyframe at the Z axis and move into the last frame and change the Z position to somewhere here. And now if we play it back, we can see that the camera and the clouds are moving over time. Now, if you're having problems while playing it back, you can come here, right click in here and you can disable high quantity and you can disable motion blur and it's going to play back uh, much better. Now, we can see that the movement of the camera is very linear and to smooth it out, I'm just going to select the camera, 
go to this last frame and I'm going to select this spline option. So if I come here, I have this camera, let's check it. And now I can see that I have these lines which are showing me the movement of the camera. So I'm just going to select this last point and make it a little smoother over time like this. And now if we play it back, we can see that the movement of the camera is smoother towards the end. So this way you can make any animation smoother. Just turn off the spline now. Let's arrange it in a better way. So I'm just going to right click in here, go to arrange and I'm going to select connected to grid. So this way everything is going to be connected to the grid. And now let's make copies of these clouds. Command C, Command V and Command V again. So let's connect it to the same verse 3D and now we have two more clouds so i'm just going to reset these image planes and now let's move them to the desired position so that we have a better parallax effect let's move the other cloud let's make it a little bigger Now that we have done it, let's add in the lights to make it look more realistic. So for that, I'm just going to click here, shift spacebar, and I'm going to type in ambient light. So let's drag and drop this ambient light into the moist 3D. But you can see that nothing is happening. That's because in the render 3D, the lighting is disabled. So just turn on the lighting. And now this ambient light is having an effect. So this ambient light is going to affect everything. So if you turn it all the way up to 1.0, it's going to, you know, make everything as it is. So let's bring it back. And first of all, now I'm going to add in a spotlight. So that's sitting right here. Just going to drag and drop this in. Connect this to the Merge 3D. And now set it to a position so that it's coming from the back of the text. So for that, I'm just going to drag it with the Z axis. And in the transform controls, I can select use target. So what it's going to do is that it's going to set up a target for me uh, for the light to follow. So let's zoom in a little bit, command and scroll wheel, zoom in. And let's change the target position to exactly match the text. I'm going to make sure that it's falling right at the text. Let's move the light a little further away like this. Let's move the z-axis one by one. So now you can see that we have the light at the back of the text and it's giving a very nice 3D effect. Let's change the color of the light. Go to controls and let's bring it more towards the sunlight like this. And now we can go back to our ambient light and we can increase the ambient light not to the full but somewhere closer to 0.9 perhaps where we can see the light, the spotlight hitting this text as well. Now, one more thing that's left and that is that the sky image that we have is kind of more on the blue side and the clouds that we have are more like on the yellow side. So I'm just going to go to this sky and select it, press shift spacebar and I'm going to type in color corrector. So just drag and drop this color corrector just between the sky and the image plane and let's select this range to the highlights because we just want to select the white portions of the image so i'm just going to move it to somewhere where it's closer to the clouds that we have added so somewhere here so now it looks much more closer and realistic with this color corrector effect now let's go back to the edit page and preview it in real time Now, just one more thing that you can do to make it more realistic is going to the color page and adding film grain effect. So if you come here, type in film grain and drag and drop it over. Just turn this to 35 mm and you can increase the opacity a little bit. And now it's going to have more like a film look rather than a picture. If this video was helpful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what would you like me to make next.